What's up, y'all? In this video, we're going to talk about domain and range. Nothing much more to it than that. Let's get to it. Domain is really all possible x values for a given function. The range is really all possible y values for a function. Really, that's all it is to start with. It's just what are the x's and what are the y's for a given function. It always seems that easy when we start with it, but as we know with IB and with math, sometimes it gets a little bit trickier than that. Let's look at some examples and see how this will start playing out for us. So this is state the domain and range for each function. All right, so first thing we need to do before we even write out what the domain and range is, is we need to identify what's happening with the function. So here we can see that we've got a red dot right there, but it's got an arrow up here. So it looks like it's gonna keep, it's gonna start right here at x equals negative two, and it's gonna keep on going all the way up uh, infinitely this way because this thing says it goes on forever. So that means we're gonna be able to keep on putting x values in off to infinity. But we can't go any further this way on our x values because we're starting at ne negative two. So we know that we're gonna start, uh, x values are gonna be x is greater than or equal to negative two. And when we look at our y values, a similar thing is happening. Hey, here is a uh, negative two here, and that looks like it's the lowest point that we're gonna go to. So everything above this are gonna be all possible values for my y values. So I'm not getting anything lower than negative two, but I am getting a lot of things higher than negative two. And as I keep on saying negative two, I realize that I actually didn't put a negative in right here. So let's make that negative two because our y is also greater than or equal to negative two. So there's our domain and range for the first one. Now what about this second one? All right, so the x values, as we look at the x values for this, now we've got arrows going off on both sides here. So that means this thing is gonna keep on going out to infinity this way and out to infinity this way. It might go out far, but we're gonna, uh, as it goes out, we're gonna go very deep uh, into our, uh, off our paper here, off the screen, and we're gonna keep on hitting different y values. So in this case, what we will typically say is x is an element of all real numbers. This symbol right here means all uh, real numbers. Real numbers are basically everything that we work with in this course. It, the only thing it excludes, imaginary numbers, because those aren't real. But we don't get into imaginary numbers in the SL course. We only, we only get into that in your HL course. So X is all real numbers. Now what about Y? Is it gonna be the same like over here? Well, no, of course not, because here we're capping out at eight for our Y. And at eight, it's gonna be everything less than eight, right? Because we're not going anything higher. So our y is gonna be everything less than or equal to eight. Now there are a couple different ways that you can write your domain and range for a given function. The first is called interval notation. Interval, interval notation is basically what I did right here. These are all intervals. Intervals are where you're just using the greater than or equal than sign. Um, although you could also say inter interval notation could use uh, rounded and square brackets. When we use rounded and square brackets, that's sometimes the saying, uh, I don't wanna mess with these inequalities. Maybe you always get it mixed up. Oh, I, I can never remember which one's greater than, which one's less than, I'm having a hard time with that. Um, so then what you would do, you would consider what is the lowest value and what is the highest value for a function. The lowest value for my x is gonna be negative two. The highest value for my x is going to be positive infinity because I can go off this way to infinity. And how I, how I close those up, I use brackets. And my brackets are, uh, are, they have two different meanings. If I have square brackets, that means inclusive. If I have rounded brackets, that means not inclusive. So if I were looking at this one, my lowest value is negative two, I know that I'm including negative two. So I would put a square bracket around negative two because I'm including that. And because I'm going off to infinity, I can't ever say that I get to infinity. So I use a rounded bracket there. That is my X value, or maybe I'll say like my domain. I'll do something like that. So it kind of indicates here's my domain. Uh, the D is indicating that domain and here's, here's the, uh, the interval that I'm using. Now with my range, my y values, I'll say my range, and I'll do, uh, I'm looking again at negative two and bigger than that. So it's actually the same thing, right? So we have the same exact thing, negative two infinity for my range. Now, when we look over here at our blue function, 
we want to think, well, what does it mean for all real numbers? This is typically the easiest way that you uh, would write this, but if we wanted to use this bracket notation, well, that means for our, our domain, we're going off to negative infinity and we're going off to positive infinity. So for that, we would just say our domain is negative infinity to positive infinity. And again, since we don't include infinity, it's just uh, rounded brackets. However, our range, uh, eight is our max value, right? It's gotta be everything less than that. So we're gonna be going down to negative infinity for our y values, for our range. So here, we're gonna be going to negative infinity, but we're going up to positive eight, and we are including positive eight there. So that's how you could use the brackets or the parentheses for your notation, um, but there is one other way, and that's called a set notation. The set notation is where we use kind of these curly brackets and we say x such that x is going to be greater than or equal to negative 2. So this is kind of the fancy way to say that sentence. x such that, this means such that, x is greater than or equal to negative 2. And if I wanted to do a similar thing with my y, it would look the same way. We would just say y such that y is greater than or equal to negative 2. If we want to go over here to our blue values uh, in a similar way, we would say x such that x is an element of all real numbers. And there we go. Or we would say y such that y is less than or equal to 8. There we go. Just to summarize, this this top section is our interval notation, and down here, this is our set notation. Now, what, what we haven't looked at is what happens if we're kind of splitting off or if we're considering something in between two values. Um, how do we write that? And actually, you know what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna make up a couple here. Let's look at two different examples. Let's say we're looking between two and eight, and we're gonna say that it is everything between two and eight. All right, so if we wanted to say everything between two and eight, if we were using our interval notation, there's two ways that we could do that. We could say two is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to eight, or we could say square bracket two comma eight square bracket. That would be how we would say that in interval notation. In uh, set value, or set notation, for that one we would say, uh, put in our curly brackets, uh, x such that two is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to eight. So we're basically just creating the one inequality here using this kind of set notation here. Now here's the one that I really want you to look at because this is the one that's probably the, the most confusing in the way that people write it. What if we had the same thing, but we're going off to negative infinity less than two uh, and we're not including two, but maybe we're going off to positive infinity uh, with our eight. In this case, it's not so easy. We can't just make it one long inequality. We kind of have to make it in two separate inequalities because we're going off in two separate directions. So if we're doing it in our, our interval notation, one way that we would say this is x is less than two or x is greater than or equal to eight. Or if we were doing, uh, using our brackets, we would say negative infinity to two, again, rounded bracket because we're not including two. And then we use this union symbol. This u, this union, this is something you typically see in probability, but it's also something that it's part of the language of set notation, similar to element of or all real numbers, the, those symbols that we're using, all those things are part of the set notation uh, language, I guess you could say. So we're kind of, we're kind of including that in here as well. So, uh, so it's kind of a mixture of set notation and interval notation. But we've got uh, negative, negative infinity to two, not inclusive. And then we've got uh, union with eight and positive infinity rounded uh, or not inclusive. So this would be the other way if you were using your brackets for something like this. And if we wanted to do this for down here with our uh, set notation, it's gonna look very similar. The values x such that x is less than two or 
x is greater than or equal to 8. Those are the main notations that you use. You could also write this out in sentences, but usually people write it in one of these forms. You'll see me use uh, kind of these brackets or you'll see me probably using these. I don't always get into all of this, even though this is this is a little bit more formal of a way to write it. Um, I tend to I tend to write it in in these in these different types of notations this way. All right, so let's see what it looks like when we actually apply it to some examples to some actual functions. So this example, we're gonna try and find the domain and range for these functions. Oh, some of these look kind of kind of nasty. Uh, they don't look like they're gonna be really easy. I, I, we might have to think a little bit on that. So you know what? Let's do that in the next video. So if this has been helpful for you, make sure you give me a thumbs up, like the video, spread it out to the YouTube universe, and I'll see you in the next one.